In this lecture, we're going to look at the thorax. Now, the thorax is made up of a bony cage flattened from front to back. And it consists of the sternum, which is the breastbone, and the ribs. Now, the ribs, there are 12 ribs, one for each of the thoracic vertebrae, because remember, the ribs do attach to the thoracic vertebrae. Now, ribs one through seven are called true ribs. And they're also called vertebrosternal ribs, mainly because they go from the vertebrae straight to the sternum. Now, they don't attach directly to the sternum, however. You do have this, which is called um, costal cartilage. Okay, and this costal cartilage, remember costal means ribs, but this costal cartilage is made up of hyaline cartilage. Okay, now ribs 8 through 12 are called false ribs. The reason is, is they don't have a direct connection to the sternum. So ribs 8, 9, and 10 actually hook up with the, um, with 7 here. Okay, and... Um, so these are going to be called, so 7 through 10 are going to be called the vertebrochondral ribs. And then ribs 11 and 12 don't attach at all except to the vertebrae. So those are called floating ribs. So again, 1 through 7, true ribs or vertebrosternal. 8 through 12 are the false ribs, with 8 through 10 being the vertebrochondral. And then 11 and 12, again, which are also false ribs, but we call these the floating ribs. And as I mentioned, this cartilage is called costal cartilage. And again, made up of hyaline cartilage. And as I mentioned, the head of the rib and what we call the tubercle of the rib are going to be attached to the thoracic vertebrae. Looking at the sternum, the sternum is made up of three parts. The top part is called the manubrium. And what attaches to the manubrium are the first and second rib. And then we also have what's called the clavicular notch. And what I don't have listed there is the suprasternal notch, also called the jugular notch. So a couple of names for suprasternal notch, suprasternal notch or jugular notch. Now, the one thing I want you to notice is this connection between the manubrium and the body. This is called the sternal angle. Sternal angle, very important. The reason it's important is because that's going to be a clinical landmark for a lot of things. If you are listening to the chest with a stethoscope, you need to know where the sternal angle is. If you're going to put EKG pads on, you want to know where the sternal angle is. What the sternal angle tells you is where the second rib is. Because typically we listen um, or put EKG pads at, uh, we start off at the second, third intercostal space. So the space right here. So in order to find that uh, second rib, we first feel for this bump and you can feel it yourself. If you go to the top of the sternum and just kind of ride your finger down, you'll feel a bump where these two come together. And if you just slide off to the side, that's where you're going to feel the second rib. So again, the second, third intercostal spaces are for the um, placing of the stethoscope or EKG pads. Also down the fourth, fifth intercostal space. And um, anyway, important landmark. So don't forget that. So again, the body of the sternum, you're going to have the costal cartilage of the second through ten ribs attaching and then we get down to the xiphoid process xiphoid process 
isn't going to ossify until about age 40. Now this is a landmark that we use for CPR because if you notice it's kind of pointy and if it's ossified it's also probably going to be quite sharp and so you do not want to snap this off. If you snap this off you're going to damage some organs. So typically we put a couple of fingers here over this and that's where that's a no-go zone. You put your palm then onto the body of the sternum and then that's where you're going to do compressions. Now going back to this um, xiphoid process and by the way it's an attachment for abdominal muscles tell me what organ might be punctured if this uh, fractures. Now don't worry if you get this wrong Almost every student I've had in the last 20 plus years has gotten it wrong. I've had a few students get it right, but that's the exception. So don't feel bad if you get it wrong. Okay, time's up. What's your answer? Okay, if you said you would puncture the heart, no, um, the heart is protected under the sternum and surrounded by the pericardium. If you think you would puncture a lung, mm, nope, because the diaphragm comes up and over and that protects the lungs. What huge organ sits right here is the liver and the liver crosses over in the midline. So what you want to be careful of is not snapping this and puncturing the liver. All right, and the sternum is also a site for a sternal puncture or a um, bone marrow biopsy. Okay, and uh, typically if it's being taken from this area here, we're looking for most likely um, a lymphoma. Lymphomas tend to form in this area and so a sternal puncture might be performed there to take a look at the bone marrow. Now a look at the ribs. We have the head of the rib which has a superior and inferior facet. Okay facet, why is it called facet? Because it's the shiny part that contains hyaline cartilage. And then we have the tubercle of the rib and here's the articular part of the tubercle. Okay. And this is the non-articular part of the tubercle. And then the rib is going to come around and you're going to have the costal angle. And we finally end up with the costal cartilage, which attaches here and then goes to the sternum. Another important, uh, part here is this costal groove. Costal groove is important because it contains what we call a neurovascular bundle and that's going to be a nerve, artery, and vein. Why this is important is sometimes a needle has to be put into the chest either to drain fluid or to, if you're doing a chest tube, to um, pull air out of the chest to reinflate the lung. Or in an emergency situation where you have what's called a tension pneumothorax, what happens is there's an injury of some type and a little flap forms. So when you take in a breath, the chest cavity fills up. When you exhale, that air does not leave the chest cavity. It stays there. So it's like blowing into a balloon and then squeezing the little end that you blow into and then blow into the balloon again and then squeeze the end. The air never leaves the balloon, so it just keeps getting larger and larger. When it does that, it starts to compress the heart and eventually the heart can't pump. Okay, so in order to correct that, sometimes you have to push a large bore needle into the chest and you'll actually hear a hiss as that air starts uh, coming out of the chest cavity um, and then the heart comes back to center, 
the trachea starts to come back to center. Um, matter of fact, that's how you can tell if someone has a tension pneumothorax is their trachea and larynx um, gets pushed off of the midline. You can see it start to come back. Uh, the pulse starts to get stronger because we're no longer compressing the heart. Well, how do you put that needle in? Do you, you use the rib as a landmark, but do you go over the top of the rib or do you go underneath the rib? Well, if you go under the rib, you're going to nick that neurovascular bundle. So you're going to cause nerve damage. It's going to be extremely painful and you're probably going to tear some blood vessels that are going to start pouring into the chest. So that person went from having a pneumothorax, which means air in the chest, to a hemopneumothorax, which means blood and air in the chest. So not a good thing. So that needle gets placed over the top of the rib and, um, and then pushed in. Okay. Also, where we see this, this bend right here, this is the fracture site, um, typically if ribs get cracked. Now, the ribs are going to increase in length uh, from ribs 1 through 7. After that, they start to decrease in length. The head and tubercle articulates with facets. And um, you remember those facets, right? On the body of the thoracic vertebrae, if it's a complete facet, we would call it a costal facet. And if it's a partial facet, we would call it a demi facet. So looking at the rib articulation, the tubercle of the rib is going to articulate with the transverse process of the thoracic vertebrae. Okay, remember that uh, costal facet for the tubercle of the rib? That's where it's going to attach. And then it comes around and the head of the rib is going to articulate with the vertebral bodies. Again, at the demi facets or the facets.